Yeah. Now, now it, I, I was going to say, we usually uh, reserve our hoppy hours for, uh, for Saturdays, but now, you know, with a little bit of a uh, little bit of music jamming it. It becomes a hoppy hour, right? Am I right? We're getting funky tonight, baby. Ooh. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So it is a Tuesday night. There is no baseball going on except for right here. Wander Franco signs a quarter of a billion dollar contract. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because we are going to have fun right here for nothing. No, no admission price at all. We won't charge you a thing. No. We will, we will, we're going to have some fun tonight. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast episode 82. 82, can you believe it? 82 straight weeks. 82 straight weeks. How are you doing this? I have no idea. I'm, I'm, You're I'm a right machine. Now, I'm, <laughs> I am literally and figuratively a machine. And, uh, you know, this is November 23rd. Again, there's no baseball except for right here. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us, give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. Send us an emoji. Send us some love. Do it. Just do it. And as always, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Let's shout out our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Cowboy Jack Durango. For being Thank on you. the power hitter level, we appreciate all of your contributions here to the Beer Baseball Blog. Thank you to Rachel Elnar for also being on the power hitter level. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you to Scott Laws for being on the cleanup hitter level. You can check out his comics and merchandise at accidentalaliens.com. And thank you to If Sports Cards for being on the leadoff hitter level. You can check out their YouTube channel of Sports Card Breaks. Pack openings and mail days at If Sports Cards. Thank you to Ian and Nikki. If you would like to become a supporter of the Beer Baseball blog and all of our efforts, go to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. You can also support us by buying stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. Go to etsy.com and search beer baseball. Here's a lineup card for today. Leading off is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Beer Baseball Blog, Cowboy Jack Durango. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. I'm coming off a wonderful weekend with my best friend and brother and uh, friend of the show, Top Gun Talwar. It was, uh, I'm surprised my liver is still intact, <laughs> but just what I needed to go into a work a week right before Thanksgiving. Having a wonderful night, my brother. Wow, I, we're so glad that you're here every week. And uh, you know, you know what's good for a a uh, a liver that's been pulverized over the weekend is a another beer, which uh, that, that you're having. A <laughs> hair of the dog, my brother. Hair of the dog. <laughs> well, sir, you got a whole you have a whole kennel there. So uh, I, I'm I'm very appreciative of all that you do here. And uh, Kevin Lyon is. Um, Again, a victim of the L.A. O.C. traffic. Um, but yes, drive, drive safely. Get here safely because we need your your uh, your brain and we need your baseball mind here. Uh, oh, my brother's here, Adam. Sh- well, is it, Sh- there we go. Hello, there hello. <laughs> yes, David is here. Thank you so much for joining, Bubble Pug. We were just talking about you. You're here so consistently. We appreciate all that you do. There we go. My my mouse is not working tonight. Uh, Ed Brown is in the in the house. Yes, look at that. Just your excitement. Yes, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have a great show for you tonight. Uh, I know because I've been working on it all week. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> I know because I wrote it. Yes, yes. Um, there, there was, a, there was a funny. I think, I think they said on Stern one time that that Steven Seagal once said that he said like, he goes, I just, I just read the greatest script I had ever read in my whole life, and they're like, oh really? Who wrote it? And he goes, I did. 
<laughs> love it love it so cowboy jack durango you have a very unique beer so let's know what you are drinking tonight <clears throat> so michael mondragon disco machine we've been friends for a long time and i do have to admit to you that i find myself jealous of you sometimes oftentimes you'll say this beer is right in my wheelhouse i can tell that this beer will be right in my wheelhouse and i never had that feeling Okay. Until tonight, my Ooh, friend. All right. Slow Brew Brewing Company, Asloha IPA Tropical Hazy. This thing's bringing a 6.5 ABV with 25 A IBUs. Mm -hmm. Brewer's notes of tropical fruit, citrus zest, and crushable. Ooh. Now, my friend, I, I have a world famous love for beer and a world famous love for seltzers. This beer has a fruity, tropical taste. It's the first time I've ever had a tropical IPA, a tropical hazy IPA, yeah. and this is this is right in my wheelhouse. Love it! I love it. Yeah, these are hard to go back on. And now, when you see them all the time, you're like, "Oh, I got to try this one. I got to try this one." Yeah, and uh, these don't miss. These are these are awesome. Hazies are are awesome just by themselves but a tropical hazy forget it it's Dude, so this good. is i mean this hits and S slow brewing company i am a professional goodwill ambassador send me a contract i'll be your goodwill ambassador <laughs> for this beer it is phenomenal it is fantastic i like it and and uh so i looked up um slow brewing and and uh they've been rocking good beer since 1988 uh and so I get, you know, obviously they have a guitar pick on there. So I think a lot of their brews are, um, are guitar related potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, so something to look out for, they, they are one of California's longest standing brew pubs, uh, our handcrafted wow. micro beers, uh, quality dining and world-class entertainment has made slow brew a pivotal component of the central coast. So yeah, one, one that we should definitely look out for and, uh, maybe we will, uh, make the trip. Uh, whenever we uh, we go down south and uh, see some baseball, maybe we have to stop at Slow Brew. Yeah, San Luis Obispo. Where That's is it. that in relation to Phoenix, Arizona? Oh, um, I think I think it's uh, just south of where Kevin is in Anaheim. If I'm not mistaken, okay. I wish he was here. He might uh, chime in on this, but I think it's on the way to San Diego. I might be wrong on that. I hope I I. I I, I'm all, I've lived here li literally half my life and I, I still don't know the proximity of certain things of where they exactly are. Um, but I, if I'm not mistaken, it, it is. Um, so it might be, it might be like a good six, five, six hour drive for me. If it's, if it's kind of close to, to Kevin. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, Ooh. it's, uh, yeah, I'm it's thinking a road trip. Path for you for sure. I'm thinking road trip. Yeah, you know, he says past OC. So yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's right. I think there's uh like San, is it by like San Juan Capistrano? Maybe um, I might, I might be wrong on that one. Oh, let's let's ask the man himself. There he is. Hello, hello. So this, yeah, this is great. I have no internet, so I'm on my phone. Oh, Perfect. internet's down. Yeah, so I'm literally on my phone. I'm like, so great. This is gonna be a great show tonight, guys. <laughs> hey, we'll roll with the punches. We'll we'll take what we can. I, get. Like I just been punched. I'm like, cool. I'm only five minutes late, and then I'm like, great. I can't get on the show. Uh, we're, wow. we're, just, we're just glad you're here. We're yeah, I'll try, here. I'll try to get situated here. Go ahead, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. That's a man. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin, uh, yeah. San Luis Obispo. Where is that in proximity to you? He's thinking. Oh, he's let's. He's let's, buffering. He's given. He's given us the the long pregnant pause. He is. <laughs> he is. When he drops this answer on us, it's gonna it's be okay. mind Kevin, blowing. Kevin, you can tell me. <laughs> hey, we're all friends here, man. We're all friends. The whole there time you. I can hear you talking too. When, <laughs> while I was down. Apparently, I was down, and everybody can hear. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Uh, it's like the San, like Santa Barbara area. It's like. I think it's a little bit north of Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. So, like you take the 101 freeway head now of LA and you would just head up about 
two, three hours north of LA, if I remember correctly. Oh, so I was north of LA. I'm thinking it's, oh, it's, it's way north. Okay. Way north. Huh. See, I'm I'm terrible. Awful. Awful. How long have you lived here? I lived here literally half my life, almost 25 years. Yeah. All right. I think I've lived here since California wasn't a state. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, you, you were just chasing that gold, weren't you? Oh, of course I was. That liquid gold. Oh, always. See what I did always, there? Always, always. Well, well I got if, some tonight. If you would have stopped at Slow Brew Brewing Company, you would have found that liquid gold, and it's called an Asloha IPA. Uh, ah, <laughs> very good. Very nice. Very nice. So, uh, Kevin, are, are, do you have your beer? Yes, sir. All right. I have my glass, but I got the beer. So... Which one do do I have? I have this one. You have that one. I have this one. This <laughs> yes. is the. You are doing great, and I am. I'm I am not doing, doing great, great, sir. Look at my. Look at me right now. I, I'm trying <laughs> to look. Do not look great. This is a six point eight a uh a six point eight ABV. It is a collaboration with Radiant and Pizza Port Brewing, and you have a similar collab collab with Pizza Port, the Personal Pep Talk. Yes. So why don't why don't you go first? So uh, they did two. So they did two, and the interesting thing was, you can only get one of these at each location. So Pizza Port has several locations in around the San Diego area, and um, the closest one where I live is in San Clemente. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just go down there, get this in person. So the main difference between these two is that this is a this is a clear IPA, and yours is hazy, and this is uh, called Personal Pep Talk. And the artwork's cool. It has like some sca skaters on both of these. And this is a uh, 7%. I don't see an IBU. But you know, I do see my ear nets back on. So I'll be back on momentarily while you talk about you're doing great. Yeah. 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 This is uh, okay. So, Jack, you were saying that you're really liking yours. This Love is it. very similar. Uh, this is, could be possibly, and a strong contender for. Uh, beer baseball blog beer of the year on my end. It is, wow. it is awesome. It is awesome. And um, I, I, we, we, I said, we, we, we sound like shills at this point, like yeah. radiant, like does no wrong. Like uh, it's, and um, again, if you're in the uh, Anaheim orange County area, please do yourself a favor, make it out to radiant pizza port is another Great brewer. Uh, there, I believe they're out of um, out of San Diego or just north yeah. of it. And they have like four or five locations around San Diego County and one in San Clemente. Okay. You know, so, and then this one you have, you're doing great, is only available at Radiant itself. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, Simcoe cool. heavy uh, with Amar Amarillo, uh, Cascade, Chinook, and uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to say this. Autonom hops, which I'm not, I have never even heard of. So you can tell and, they can that there because you have a whole big description and I don't have any description like that. On this. Right. You right. Know. So these, these, uh, it says, uh, timeless flavors of citrus, grass, pine, and green melon wrapped in a medium, bitter, juicy softness, ripe peach, green papaya, mango, and lychee. So, I mean, there's a lot of flavor in this, I mean, yeah. as you can imagine with all those. So, um, it, Again, when I saw that they were, did a collab, and then th there's two of them, I'm just like, Kevin, how are we going to do this? <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, I, I got to drive to San Clemente. All right, I'll make it happen. <laughs> and if you follow, if you follow me on uh, Instagram, I literally did like, I think I stopped at one, two, I stopped at four breweries on Saturday to, it, to make a delivery to Michael, along with whatever I had from Strike Brewing when I was up in the San Jose area uh, a couple weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. So some great beers tonight. Um, that's what we'll be enjoying while we're doing the show. Right. Uh, I wanted to, yeah, you pop it open. <laughs> Finally. So I'm going to do this right here because you actually gave me something from your right. trip. Yes. Yeah. I forgot about this. The bonus. There is a bonus here. Um, this wasn't from your trip when you were getting the beers, but it was like from your trip from before that, right? Yes, it was a, a bit of a week and a half or so ago. Uh, we stopped at a town called Niles, which is right next to Fremont. And it was like one of those old school kind of neighborhoods, like antique stores. There was a little museum uh, about silent films because I guess it was a studio that filmed a bunch of Westerns and a few Charlie Chaplin films as well. So they made a little museum about silent film history. And then the store was called Mantiques. 
and the antiques. So, okay. And I think they're in co collaboration with a company called Toy Trauma, which is another good name for her there. And this store had like so much incredible stuff. And I saw this item and I'm, and I would not have been able to say, be like, I'd be like, what is this? But because the beer baseball blog, I was like, this is a great gift. Oh, okay. Well, with, without further ado, this is going to be very so appreciate it. All You'll right. appreciate it. Not the CVS bag. I put it in because I know I have nothing to wrap it in. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's a very bachelor wrapping paper. I yeah. think it. You know what? It was my eye prescription. I'm like, I need a bag. This fits. All right. I'm actually going to close my eyes while I. Well, yeah. you're, you're going to be the only other person who's going to know what it is instantly when you see what it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. This is absolutely, you're right. You, you probably would, this would have been, I would not radar. have known about this. I learned about this guy from the beer baseball blog. Hawk Harrelson, the white Sox. Um, he doesn't do the commentary anymore. No, he quit a few years ago. Holy. And there are a bunch. Is it a bunch of nests? Yes, it is. It's one of those. I don't remember the name of the dolls, but it's the Russian dolls. So yeah, the, Russian, Russian the nesting, the Russian nesting dolls. Yes. I can't remember what they're called, but oh my god! Go. Okay, so, so, the, so yeah, it comes off. Saying, you're gonna like this, yeah. So that's the first one. That's yeah, that's the main one. Then you gotta see what's in there. So there, <laughs> I love that one. I like. I lost. When I saw that one. I have to get this. That is so amazing. Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh my god! I can't believe that there's. That's more. the best one, honestly. The last one's great too, though, because it's like, oh, what was I was expecting? Yeah, and then when there he, he is, when he was a ball player. Wow. Right? This yeah, is definitely pop for that. So good. I told you you're gonna you're gonna have to put that up there with the bobblehead somewhere, sir. Yes, that is. Oh my god, that, that is amazing. Now, how did you find that? I mean, like, was it just sitting there and amongst yeah, a whole bunch? Yeah, those just a bunch of like they they had a ton of bobbleheads, and and I I saw I saw I was like, is that Hawk Harrelson? And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it is. And I can say just because of that, and I'm like, and it's one of the. The Russian nesting dolls. Like, oh my gosh. And I and like this is so it's such an odd item that I was like, you appreciate it. Oh my god. And 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 uh to uh to coin a phrase from Hawk Harrelson, you can put it on the board. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I'll put it I'll put it right by the board. Do you have it by do you have a can of corn that you can put it by? <laughs> I'm gonna put it up here. I don't want it to fall. That that would be uh, quite a faux pas as well. Yeah, I, I knew that, that, that belongs at the that belongs to your baseball headquarters. I agree. I agree. That that is absolutely tremendous. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad it's in a good home. Yeah, John. John knows you can put it on the board. There we go. Yes. Beautiful. I, he also uh, <laughs> he also has a, another awesome one, which is you gotta be bleeping me. Like he yeah. gets like legit, like he did. When I'm fired. Does he say bleeping? He said bleeping. He said, God but he, if he could, he would be yeah, sure. like, mad. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to ex explain him to a friend, my friend on the drive back from up the, from up north, and I, and I just looked up at Hawk Harrelson. It was like a clip of him just like being like just upset about plays, like him melting down, and a lot of you like that. You got to be bleeping me. And he would melt down on like White Sox players, like when they yeah. would make oh, mistakes yeah. and stuff like that. And he uh, would rip on him. It'd be like. People grew up here in LA, like listening to Chick Hearn talking. He would he would go after the Lakers. If, you know, they're like, ah, oh, the dog. You know what? Let's feed the Lakers some outpo because they're playing like dogs tonight. You know, that's like old Chick <laughs> like, wow. So we, need that, we need a lot of that more, and then uh, it's 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 yeah, going away. Do, but... Yeah, you do miss that from your local uh, players. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Actually, can, uh, actually, guys, bubble bug this. Do, does uh does Euchre do does he rip on the Brewers if they're playing bad during a game? Because I've never really heard him do Brewers broadcast. That'd be a good question, you know. Because because nowadays I don't know how much tenure there is for announcers. You know, I mean Euchre's probably the last one is around forever. Yeah, I wonder if he. I, he probably calls it as it is, but he doesn't. If it's not too controversial, we would have definitely heard by it. There's a lot, it seems like there's a lot of hurt feelings. I mean, we talked about it when Steve Stone, like he was very yes. critical. Yeah. Uh, and they, they wound up getting rid of them. So, well, I'd say it's, it's more a, uh, you know, it's definitely not PG, but if you, if you Google um, on YouTube, Norm McDonald and Bob Euchre, you can definitely hear some unique Bob Euchre tales. Yes. Definitely not yes. safe for work. He's de he's definitely an old school announcer for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. Great man. 
So let's get to it. Let's get to this day in baseball history for November 23rd. Uh, again, no baseball going on, but a lot going on behind the scenes, which um, which will be fun. November 23rd, 1943, Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis suspends William Cox indefinitely after the Phillies owner acknowledges making some sentimental bets on his team, not knowing it was against the rules. The gambling allegation first surfaced in July when the club's recently fired manager, Bucky Harris, revealed he had evidence that his former boss was wagering on Philadelphia games. So, uh, Jack, what do you think of Kennesaw Mountain Landis just by <laughs> his face right there? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I think uh, Kennesaw, Kennesaw Mountain Landis is a he's a tomato can. The, <laughs> the guy you know, like what? Come on, he threw out some bats. This is freaking baseball. Like so, so. There's a reason why he. I think he was very touchy about this subject because Landis was the first commissioner of baseball from 1920 until his death in 1944. And he is remembered for his handling of the Black Sox scandal in which he expelled eight members of the Chicago White Sox from organized baseball for conspiring to lose the 1919 World Series and repeatedly refused their reinstatement requests. So there you go. And he was a judge, am I correct? Yes, he was a, he was a judge. And... Um, so this is this this is good foreshadowing. Uh, we're going to be talking about Kennesaw Mountain Landis uh, more in this uh, this day in baseball. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's interesting that you said he died in 1944. So that's he did. He we're did. literally like right before he passed away. I mean, yeah. he, he looks a little he looks a little rugged at this yes, point in his he, life. <laughs> haggard to say the least. Haggard. haggard. He's like, man, look at those kids on my lawn. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Why are they betting on jacks? Yes. Not, not you, Jack. I mean the game jacks. Right. <laughs> November 23rd, 1962, the baseball writers select Dodger shortstop Maury Wills as the National League most valuable player. The gold glove infielder stole a record 104 bases this season and serves as a catalyst in the team's 102 victories and their attempt to capture a pennant, an effort that fell short in a three-game playoff against San Francisco. I forgot that like, he had that amazing season and they didn't even go to the World Series that year. So I don't even know where they got all these bases, by the way. How, how do they how do they get all those bases? Oh, those are bases. Yeah. What, what, what oh. did you think they were? <laughs> oh. I don't know. Right. Man, I, I, I thought he just made like a successful trip back from Colombia or something. Like, <laughs> and uh, you know, you know what's like wrong about that, don't you, Michael Mondragon? That he did have a pretty bad drug problem. He did. He really, he did. Got a, he really had a. And I think it was. I think it was uh, the white. The white baggies. I think it was the white stuff. <laughs> So look at that. Cowboy Jack knows his baseball stuff, man. <laughs> I mean, was cocaine even around the '60s? Yeah, sure it was. Yes. I would know. I'm in the 1860s. I'm talking about the 1860s. My era. <laughs> November 23rd, 1964. The Mets purchased wow. future Hall of Fame lefty Warren Spawn from the Braves. In addition to serving on the club's coaching staff, the crafty Southpaw will post a 4 and 12 record in 20 appearances. So it's a slow news day, okay? So this is this is big news. Yeah, you know, a Hall of Famer getting signed. You know, yeah. I, I kind of found a little interest in it that he was on the coaching staff, but yet still had uh 16, like um 16, well, four and twelve. You know, it's not super I have, amazing. I have, no, right I, I have no idea he's a Matt. I didn't I either. Him. So, you know, he was right at the beginning of the Mets franchise. Yeah. Um, but okay, so so let's let's have some fun. Uh, since it's a slow news day. Let's see if we can travel from New York to California to Japan via television, movie, and pro wrestling references. What do you what do you what do you say? Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So Spawn resembles uh, actor, comedian, singer, vaudevillian, and pianist Jimmy Durante, who was a very famous uh, radio <laughs> and uh 
uh, for for those right. older folk out there, Kevin, um, uh, what, what what was his tagline? Oh God, I can't even remember. I'm, I, he had a couple, I, I, he had a couple my, of them. I know. That's why I'm like, he would just like make weird noises though. Sometimes wouldn't he? Yes. <laughs> he would go ah cha cha cha. He oh, would that's also, it. That's it. He would that's also it. at the end of his radio um, uh, broadcast, he would always go. Good night, Miss Calabash, wherever you are. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yes. Yes. But he was also known as the schnoz or the great schnozola for his very large nose. Okay. So. Oh, uh, you know what? It's not that noticeable until you point it out. <laughs> Especially with the profile. The profile it does not stick out. The profile of the proboscis. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Double word score on that one. Um, okay. So Jimmy Durante was born in New York city. There you go. So there, there's a tie right there, but he died in Santa Monica, California in 1980. Ooh. Okay. So uh, who's another, um, Southern California celebrity that has a large, uh, a large facial feature Jay Leno, of course. So Santa Monica is just South oh, I know of where you're California. Going. <laughs> Where Jay Leno, born in New Rochelle, New York. Um, if you watch the Dick Van Dyke show, that's uh, Dick Van Dyke lived in uh, and uh, uh, and his wife lived lived in uh, New Rochelle on on the show. That is, um, and he also hosted the Tonight Show. So uh, Jay Leno did. Huh. And I'm sure Jimmy Durante was a guest on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. There you go. Oh, Most like. Oh no, I forgot about this part. <laughs> Oh, so Jay geez. Leno and Diamond Dallas Page defeated Hollywood Hogan and Eric Bischoff in the main event of the Road Wild pay-per-view for World Championship Wrestling in 1998. Oh, I can't man. I can't I can't even believe this match happened. Okay, oh, so now we're so look, look, look at wrestling. all that pressure. Look how strong <laughs> he is. Look all that pressure he's putting on 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 Hogan's uh, you know, elbow there. I've seen so many cases of where Hulk Hogan uh, like elevated wrestling, but also tried to bury wrestling. And this was one. Right. Of them. Yes. But you know, but you know so, what? They were looking for mainstream publicity and that's what they got out of this. They got and you it. know they what? I mean, it. look at this big crowd, but Sturgis, you know, it's Sturgis, Sturgis, right? exactly. Sturgis, yeah. rally. So literally no, no, way, nobody paid to see this. And let's mm -hmm. pay per view, I guess. Okay. So, Who's a another? Uh, who's a pro wrestling celebrity who has a large chin? That's right. The uh, the legendary Antonio hey, Inoki. Yes, enjoying a, a biru here. Biru. Yes. All right. So so, what's the next step? Obvious. Well, I was hoping you'd have. Hogan versus Anoki. That's why I was hoping the photo would be because they have to wrestle no. all the time. Oh no. It's it, you got let's this. Take with Antonio Inoki in the 1978 movie, The Bad News Bears Go to Japan, ah, yeah. starring Tony Curtis, born in New York. Wow. <laughs> I I'm gonna I'm gonna need to storyboard that and I'm gonna have like <laughs> yeah. thumbtacks and red twine. It's, like. it's, it's like that Charlie it's the Charlie. It's the Charlie meme from uh, "It's Always Sunny" with just yes. you know, him, with him just confused putting <laughs> you, all these hip lines everywhere. Not only did you connect all those cities and references, but you did it using body parts. Well done, <laughs> sir. Well done. Wow, those are amazing it's photos too. Look at that, Chico Bell Bonds. They, I, I'm glad that Chico's was still willing to sponsor them on a trip to Japan. That's great. exactly exactly. And for those who Let care, this ring. For those who care, this is the third and worst Bad News Bears movie. It was also nominated for many worst movie categories in 1979, and it has a pitiful 6% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> now, I, can't I don't believe, know uh, how that's possible to see a grown Japanese professor, professional wrestler beat up a bunch of little leaguers. I have to pay huge money to see that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I, it looks I, I want to know who the mask guy is. Do you? I don't. I'm just curious I who the no mask idea. wrestler is in the corner there. I know. That's I'm one of the kids. Out, I, I don't know. Maybe Ed, will, maybe Ed, maybe he'll help me out with that. That's one I'm of the like, kids. Oh. That's one of the kids. I don't think so. I don't think it is. 
I don't. I, I, I there's so much. All we kids need, are in their uniforms. We need to watch. Right? This, this is great to watch this just to know like what the, what everything. I haven't, is I haven't seen. I've, I haven't seen that. I don't even think I've ever seen the entire film. I've seen. Remember watching this scene? So I had to see the scene. You know, it's so bizarre. <laughs> she is <Bill. laughs> <laughs> Now we're really just amusing ourselves. You know. Hey, Mr. Soup, what's up? Ah, thank you, Mr. Hey. Soup. <laughs> All right, so um, so th th yes, so that that was fun. I, I knew that it was going to be a slow news day, so that was a little fun. Well little done, fun. well done. Thank you. Fifty years ago today, November twenty third, nineteen seventy one, Bill Verdon is named to take over for the retiring the retiring Danny Murtaugh as the world champion Pirates manager. The Bucks former skipper will return to the uh, Pittsburgh dugout during the 1973 season to replace his replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually returned after this. Wow. Now this is very unfortunate. Yeah. I wrote this down and this was 50 years ago. Unfortunately, I'm very sad to report that Bill Verdon passed away today. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Go for oh, That was awful to yeah, hear. Yeah. And um, he actually uh, had a batting average of 267, 91 home runs, uh, 502 runs batted in. His managerial record was 995 and 921 for a five, uh, 519 average. He was a player with the Cardinals and Pirates and a manager for the Pirates, Yankees, Astros, and Expos. I totally forgot he was with the Expos from 83 and 84. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a two-time World Series champion, a NL Rookie of the Year in 55, and a gold glover in 62. So, salute, Bill Verdon. Yeah. yeah. And I actually think that I probably know him more for Houston Astros, probably. Because he was. I remember him as a manager. I didn't remember him. I, and I saw Larry, he was a player, but obviously that was before my time. <clears throat> sure. Sure. Before my yeah, time. Yeah, he was. Um, sure. Yeah, 55 and 56 with the Cardinals, and uh, 56 through 65 with the, with the Pirates. So he has a long history with the Pirates. Wow. Huh. Yep. November 23rd, 1977, the Red Sox signed free agent Mike Torres when the former Yankee agrees to a seven-year, $2.5 million deal to pitch for Boston. Can you imagine? $2.5 million for seven years for a yep. starting pitcher. Heck of a lot of money. <laughs> Heck of a lot of money. <laughs> That's nothing these days. Oh no, yeah. no! It's still a lot of money, but you know, for us. But, <laughs> but get know. this! But get this! So they signed him. I, I, this doesn't even make sense. The the thirty two year old right hander, thirty two, seven, seven year him, deal, seven year deal, thirty two, compiles a sixty and fifty five record before his trade to the Mets five years later. Oh, there you go. So it's like it was. It, so he was twenty seven still. Still, oh, it's like. Good on the wrong side of, of 20, I say, yeah. um, uh, but becomes the scapegoat for a frustrated uh, Boston Red Sox fan base as the losing pitcher in the 1978 one game playoff against the Yankees. So too, I saw that picture. I'm like, uh Oh, Bucky it's, effing dent. Yes. It's really too bad that Boston fans have to find a scapegoat and can't just accept that they're losers. Come on. <laughs> Wow. Wow, coming from Jack, that's fresh coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I actually I like I have an uh there's an like 1983 uh Boston Red Sox uh, card with him. So he made it to he made it pretty far in his contract. I thought he was a Yankee too at some point in his career, but I don't I don't he was right before, It was right before this. It was right before that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're like, oh shoot, let's get let's steal this guy from the Yankees. That might have been part of the inspiration. Let's get him and sign him to a long-term deal. Yeah. You know. Okay. Speaking of the Yankees, November 23rd, 1988, Steve Sachs signs a three-year deal as a free agent with the Yankees worth $3.75 million. The former uh National League rookie of the year will replace fan favorite Willie Randolph at second base. And Randolph will sign with the World Championship Dodgers, taking Sachs' spot. I totally so forgot funny. they flip flop. I, I forgot about that part. I was like, wow, but Willie was definitely, he was with them for a good 10 years or so. So, yes. 
You know, you get him out, then they bring a Dodger over. Oh, come on. Yankee fans probably were not thrilled about that. And Jack, you'll 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 really relish in this one. One of the things that happened with Steve Sachs was, you know, how like, you know, when you're putting, they call it the yips, you know, when like you're close and like a, a one foot putt and he like hit it like six feet, right? Right. That's what Steve Sachs used to do at, at second base. He would get a, just a clean, like ground ball to him. And then he couldn't throw it to first. It was oh. like a really bad habit that he was having. He was like skipping it and throwing it over. It was like, it was really kind of weird. I had not enough, not enough rum in, in Joe Boo's cut, dude. <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah. And Mr. Yeah. Mr. Suit. Yeah. Mr. Yip himself. <laughs> Mr. Yip. <laughs> yip. 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 Yips. Yip. Yip. You're a. So we were talking about the seven year contract, right? So on November 23rd, 2007, the woeful Reds bullpen gets a boost with the signing of free agent Francisco Cordero to a four-year, $46 million contract. Oh, my God. Are you ready for this? The 32-year-old former Brewers closer collected 44 saves and 51 chances while posting a 2.98 ERA with Milwaukee last season. They signed a 32-year-old reliever for $46 million. Hey, he had good numbers there. He had good numbers, it sounded like, before that. So what happened? How'd that work out for the Reds? <laughs> Maybe he just couldn't handle this the, the rich culinary offerings of Cincinnati. Yes. I mean, yeah. they've probably got a really mean chili dog in Cincinnati. They do. Cincinnati, I've had Cincinnati chili. It's, it's very See? Cincinnati chili dogs probably slew, slowed him down a little bit. <laughs> I can't blame him. I can't blame him. Uh, November 23rd, 2009, Joe Maurer becomes the fifth twin to be named to the American League's most valuable player, joining Zolio Versalis wow. in 65, Har Harmon Killebrew in 69, Rod Carew, 77, and Justin Morneau in 2006. The slugging gold glove catcher who missed the first month of the season with a back injury receives 27 of uh, 28 first place votes and the St. Paul native easily outpoints Yankee teammates, Mark Teixeira and Derek Jeter. Now here's a question. What is the MVP award named? Uh, I, know you like, the, I, know, I know you like to have reference. The blank back. MVP award. What, what is it named? It's actually, there's a name. Oh, on I that. know now you, you mean currently. Currently, currently, or what was it called? Oh, because I thought now in the, don't they call it like the Willie Mays? No, the well, they, they, they might, they might call it the will, they might call it. That's not but it, you, I'm waiting to see what sponsor because I know we talked about Rollades Fireman of the Year, but oh, Kennesaw Mountain. Oh my gosh, wow. So, as of a year ago, it was the Kennesaw Mountain Landis Memorial Award. Wow. On October 20th, 2020, the name of the former baseball commissioner who never had a black player in the majors during his long reign is pulled off the future MVP plaques after more than 75 years. He will not be depicted on any of the annual awards presented by the baseball writers. Um, and the decision came after an 89% approval rating. Um, wow. Yeah, they, they, they wiped it out. So the owners are woke. Sounds like Kennesaw might have had some skeletons in the closet. Yeah. Well, uh, it was, I got it was shortly after that now. when Jackie Robinson, you know, started playing. So Yeah, there you go. But it took this guy. I, he potentially could have been holding black players out of the league as well. Right. So there you go. So there, there it all comes around, right? It does. I wait to see him. Like, he's got to be from down south, right? No, he's from Ohio. <laughs> 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 I died I in Chicago. I'm like, oh. I, I thought it was going to be the Antonio Inoki Award. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it could still can be, still can I be. Mean, you never know. It was amazing. Cameo. Bad news okay. bears go to, go to Japan. And finally, November twenty third, twenty ten, Josh Hamilton joins Jeff Burrows in seventy four, Juan Gonzalez in ninety six and ninety eight, Ivan Pudge Rodriguez 
in 99 and Alex Rodriguez in 2003 as the fifth Ranger player to win the American League's Most Valuable Player Award. The Texas slugging outfielder who received 22 of the of 28 first place uh, votes cast by the writers led the major leagues in batting with a 359 average, hitting 32 homers and driving in 100 runs despite missing 20, 29 games in September after suffering two broken ribs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's interesting. Two MVPs who actually missed like almost a month of the season. Yeah. Um, like I'm just trying to remember the last time a, a player, a catcher won MVP with Joe Maurer earlier. I meant to ask you about that because I have no oh, yeah, idea. Yeah. Well, there's uh, Ivan Rodriguez there. Yeah. 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 yeah this, uh, this is a good looking dude. So a, Jack, you're going to love, this guy has an amazing story that you would love. You'll love. Like he, on a, he, on a, he was real, let, real quick on a scale from Cowboy Jack to Ian from If Sports Cards in the looks department, <laughs> Ian of course being the highest. This dude's an eight. He's a solid eight. <laughs> Look at that jawline. Ah, all right. Sorry. So this this guy could have actually been better, and he had a lot of drug problems, and it 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 took over his career. Like he got really? out of baseball. Like he, I think at the beginning of his career, he was like a phenom. And then um, he just drugs took him out and he was like homeless and he worked his way back to baseball and everything. Wow. And then, then it happened again. Yeah. There was this really unfortunate incident that happened in Texas where between innings, he actually threw a ball into the stands and this, um, firefighter father and his son uh, were in the stands and the firefighter um, dad like reached over the rail to catch the ball and fell and died. Oh my Lord. And it really, it took such a, a huge toll on him as well. And um, I'm not saying that, that it, it spiraled him back to drugs, but it was right. like, you can imagine like the, the that's so traumatic, of, you know, it's yeah. a traumatic experience. I couldn't even yeah. imagine. I, it, it was, was, like it was, it was I, I like when I heard about it, I was like, it was horrified. Yeah. I'm like, of all the people for that to happen to, I'm like, Oh my gosh. And uh, so, yeah, he, this guy is like, and then I think it was like in 2000, whenever the um, Ed might remember this, I think it's 2008. It was uh, before the all-star game. Like he was, he won the all-star um, home run contest and he was hitting bombs like at the old Yankee stadium. Like this guy was like an amazing hitter in 2011. Like he almost won the world series for the Rangers. Yeah. Um, for the big Cardinal comeback. So this guy was like awesome. And uh, he, he is the role model that you're looking for. The, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that that the angels, like the angels, you know, I guess he got the mode to triple A ball because the Angels signed him. And, oh, is that uh, right? It, it oh yeah. Definitely <laughs> I definitely was a fan. I definitely was not a fan of him with the Angels. He it, it was it was pretty bad. It was it was a total bust. Like a lot, it seemed like everybody the Angels signed on the free agent market doesn't work out very well. They, they signed CJ Wilson and they were trying to capitalize on those players from those that that time. Yeah, right? and you know, but that didn't work it was out. unfortunate. Yeah, Josh Hamilton is awesome. I, I I really rooted for him. Man, I gotta look into it. I'm gonna have to read. I'm gonna have to read up on him. Yes, you have to do the research. Yeah. My my selfish history research. with the with him on, on the Angels going. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's. I mean, it's the Angels. Like, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, it's minor league. You can't get that invested, dude. Come on, it's the Angels. Uh not <laughs> anymore. Don't worry. <laughs> Not All right, so let's get to it. This is Baseball Card Sharks. Here are the Baseball Card Sharks standings. Uh, I Unfortunately, guys, I, I am in the lead. Unfortunately for you, but, but fortunately for me, right? Um, we need to get Angelo back in here to, to, get, to bump up his record or bump down his record. Uh, yeah, Kevin, you're right in the middle. Cowboy Jack after those two wins. Ooh, yeah, um, man, Mr. Mister 154. I like it. <laughs> all right so um unfortunately we had somebody else pass away and this guy wasn't on my radar um but he's actually gonna start out our um baseball card sharks it is doug jones and he was born in covina california actually jack you're gonna love this he actually attended central arizona college which is near casa grande 
uh, between Lawrence. Phoenix and Tucson. <laughs> yes, by right, Florence. Right actually. near Florence, Arizona. Right the prison. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm well aware. <laughs> yep. And um, yeah, he was a five time all star. Family members in there. Yeah, he, <laughs> 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 yeah. This guy was not on my radar, and he should have been because he was uh, a five time all star from uh, 88 uh, through 90, 92, and 94. He played with the Brewers, the Indians, the Astros, the Phillies, the Orioles, the Cubs, Brewers again, the Indians again, and then the Athletics. He played until 2000. I'm like, how is this guy not on my radar? Wow. And he's wow. also a part of the 300 Save Club. He has 303 saves. Yeah. Only 31 wow. members are in that club. Yeah, he actually, um, like, in comparison. There he had a few good years with. I remember more of the Astros more than the Indians, but, but yeah, he, was good, he was like a good, tall guy. And come on, you get you got to respect that stash. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, he has a very respectable stash. Brother, uh, lo brother looks like he just is a bounty hunter in the off season, right? Like, <laughs> God bless you, Doug Jones, man. Rest in power, dude. And yeah. In comparison, so Doug Jones has 303 saves. Aroldis Chapman has 306. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah, you yeah. would never know that the wow. two are, are as close as, as they are. Yeah. So definitely salute to uh, Doug Jones. Cheers. The reason I bring him up is he's actually going to start out. Um, let me. Our let me card shark up. game. All he's right. He's actually going to start, start it out for us. Wonderful. Let me add this to the stream. While you set this up, Michael, I just saw um, someone in the chat. Um, Someone you met from Arizona is is watching the show tonight. They, they, who you and Jack met? If you look there, uh, Matthew. Oh, right there. on! Yes. So there you go. Networking here. Oh, glad to see, really? glad to see how we see new viewers around. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Matthew. There we go. There you go. Gosh, right on! You. Yeah, making Matthew, friends. What's going Thank on, Matthew. dude? Thank you so much for joining. Cheers to you, brother. Yeah, he's a sweet stash as well. I I wish I could grow a, a mustache like that. I, I love that Doug Doug Jones. Believe. That's yeah. why I married Doug Jones, which is baseball, not fantasy baseball, still with history back in that period. Yeah. So I, I saw that Doug Jones had actually passed away and I'm like, what? Doug Jones, Doug Jones. I know that name. And on our 91 cards, I actually oh, had a Doug Jones and it was sitting on top. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at it that. just happened that. to be sitting on top. So we're going to start out with him today. So, okay. So who's going to go first and what, what categories? Kevin's going first. All right. All right. So, Jack, what's the category we're going to do? Let us let me uh, look at the – so we can go with uh, games, uh, wins, losses, uh, strikeouts, walks. I want to go wins. Okay, let's go wins. We're I doing was going to say saves for Doug Jones, but that might be really hard because we have a lot of starting pictures. You know what I mean? That's right. Ah, that's a really cool card, though, man. That is, I, li I like that card, man. But set that one aside. That's like I cool will. Card. I mean, this is it's a classic card too. He yes. he looks like he was in major league too. He totally yes. was in major league with like you know looking oh, like good. that. Yeah, he was sitting right on top, and I'm like, oh man, that's why I know him. So we're gonna we're gonna start out with him in memoriam to Doug Jones. So, uh, for Matt, I don't if if you uh, Matthew, if you if you don't know how we play this, we're actually gonna draw um, eleven cards. Eight go on the board. Three go on your bench, and uh, so the, the it's career wins. So we're going to look at what his career wins are, and then we go through and see these uh, subsequent cards, if they're higher or lower. It's just that simple. Yeah. Oh, and the reason why I'd say lot, we shouldn't go with saves is because if we have a lot of starting pitchers, it's going to, you know, we're going to have a lot of, like, zeros. Or yeah, probably. that's true. So, da so David Cohn. Oh, David Cohn, all right. That could be an interesting matchup right there, though. It is. An experience. Uh, Dave Lapointe for the Yankees. All right. So this is 91 tops. Uh, Scott Terry for the Cardinals. All right. Not Dwayne Wade, but Dwayne Henry. <laughs> he he looks like he has, he's trying to go a stats to make it look like he's 21, Jack, to go to the bar. Yeah. He wants to go to the gold club because he's a brave. <laughs> Ed Whitson. That's a cool picture. It is a cool. I love that. Uh, former twin, uh, Frank Viola. There you go. Former Cy Young Award winner, if I remember right. right. Yeah. PYT, Mike Jackson. 
<laughs> I want to love you. you day by day. Okay, here we go. Uh, Jeff Robinson, who I actually I've seen pitch. He, if I'm not mistaken, he pitched for – if he played for the Giants, I saw him pitch for the Phoenix Giants, if I'm not right. mistaken. So that goes on the bench. Uh, Frank DePino is on the bench as well. And lastly, Rich Rodriguez. Rich right. Rodriguez. I, I mean, if I heard the guys on the bench, they belong on the bench. <laughs> All right, man. Everybody in the in the chat, sound off. Yeah, I might, I might need some help. Who knows? No, no one wants to help me. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, uh, Doug Jones. Let's see how many career wins he has. Career wins twenty two as of right. nineteen ninety one. So twenty one. I was right. Twenty twenty two. Sorry. So. David Cohn in 1991. No, I, I don't know how long David Cohn's been pitching. David Cohn obviously had a really long career, but this is pretty early on here. Yeah. This is going to be closer than I would think. I, I'm trying to think when he would have started. I still think of – again, am I still there? Yep, you're here. Oh, yep. here. You're here. You're here. Oh, maybe he froze again. <laughs> we hear you. So what I what I what I think he was going to say was that he, he followed David Cohn for a very long time. There you are. There you are. Don't worry. Well, I, I was putting in the chat too. I wrote higher just in case. I'm like, oh, here goes my internet. Oh, again. okay. So <laughs> go I was going to guess higher. But... Oh, technology. Okay, so higher than 22. Ooh, 53. Wow. Oh, nicely hot. Okay. Wow, I didn't. I thought I didn't think of him that much at that point. All right, cool. So, does Dave Lapointe have higher or lower than fifty-three? I know he. I think he played quite a while. So, I guess I'll say higher. He played for higher several than 53. years. Fifty-three. Higher than fifty-three. Sure. Yeah, you did really great because I, oh. I was going to say yeah, he played with the Cardinals, so eighty. Wow. Yeah, I knew it was the Cardinals, but I didn't know how long. So yep. 80. All right, cool. I'll take I'll let me take that. So Scott Terry. Scott Terry, higher or lower than 80. If if I haven't heard of him, he's lower. <laughs> I would say the same thing. I'm a Cardinal fan. I have not heard of Scott Terry. Wow, I'm you lower. don't know who he is. All right. He has 20 wins though. Wow. More, wow. More, All right. More than I expected. Hey, I'm glad he has something because I'm like, I don't know if my little like fake ID guy here, you know. <laughs> so this will the be guy interesting. I want to go to the gold club. Dwayne Henry, higher or lower than 20? I never even heard of this guy. 20 is really not a good number, but I'm still going to say lower. You're going to say lower and you can go. Yeah, to your sure. Bench. I'll give it a shot. Okay. He looks like a youngin. Lower than 20. Nicely done. Five. All right, I'll take it. Five career wins. <laughs> so Eddie Whitson on this cool card, higher oh, or lower boy. than five? Definitely, definitely higher. I'm really curious what his is because I'm looking at Viola going, that's going to be tough. Oh, yeah. Whitson so, was a veteran. But higher? Wow. Look at, I mean, it, look at, look oh at my the, gosh. the print on that one. Definitely higher with 122. So this wow. could be a very interesting matchup. Yeah. This is a tough one here. So does Frank Viola have higher or lower than 122? You can go to your bench. Yeah, I know. I, I'm actually thinking of going to the bench here. Let me think about this for a minute. 122 Coward, is the number. Right? Coward's retreat, dude. Coward's retreat. Oh, gosh. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. My... my Everything is failing. The internet's failing. Hopefully, I don't feel this. <laughs> what did, Sorry, what did guys. You say? Oh, yeah, I'm back. All right, let's try this again. 122. Yeah. Jeez. Let me think. He's already in the. Gosh. All right, I'm going to go to the bench. Ooh, okay. So, we're going to replace Eddie Whitson. I'll take that Rodriguez kid. Rich Rodriguez, your new number yes, is <laughs> nicely done. One, 
Ah. <laughs> one. I'm really one? curious on this one because I don't. I wanted. I, I mean, obviously it's higher, but I'm really curious what Viola's is. One is the loneliest number, but not today. But I didn't want to. I didn't know for sure. Ooh, it was. It'd be close. One thirty-seven. One thirty-seven. Wow, it was really close. Yeah, I. I wasn't sure on that. Super close. I would not have been sure on Super that close. one. Super close. So you make right. it up I'll here. I'll make the sure thing. And uh, so 137, Mike Jackson, not the jobber for the NWA in the late 80s. But what do you say? And not that other Mike Jackson. I mean, it's lower. <laughs> I like his glow. Lower. You are correct, sir. 18. So you run the yes. gauntlet. Wow. Kevin runs the guy. I had to use the bench card, so that could cost you have to me. Use but... the bench card, which um, if somebody runs the gauntlet and doesn't use the bench card, uh, they actually win the round. Um, well, you you can say what's going to happen when I play. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Jack. Th these are your cards. So uh, from the twins, Mark Guthrie. Oh yeah, Mark Guthrie. Sure. Thank Roger you. McDowell. Mike Awesome's little That's brother. Really? <laughs> I haven't heard this name in a long time. Greg Cataret. Oof. I haven't heard of him. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that guy. Could be Cataret yeah. for all I know. He's an, he's an old pro. I thought I was going to say Cabaret. He's going to be singing the Cabaret. <laughs> Liza Minnelli. No, this is Ken Hill. Yes. Danny Jackson of the Reds. I was, did he used to play on the Cardinals, or am I thinking of somebody else? He used to play for the Royals, I believe. Yeah, that's why. Okay, that's Royals. Gotcha. I was thinking uh, of Danny Cox. Scott Bankhead for the Mariners. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of this one. This is the same. This is the same card as the Greg Cattaray, so we're gonna get rid of that card. Uh, Sc Scott Radinsky of the White Sox. Who, uh, fun fact, I believe he later was in a punk rock band on Epitaph Records. For real? Yeah. Wow, you have to look that one I'm up. I'm spacing out the name of the band right now. Ed might uh, Ed might remember. I'm you, pretty you're sure going to like this one, Paul. Uh, Paul. You're going to like this one, Jack. Paul Ossenmacher. Yeah, no, Paul Ossenmacher is a solid name. <laughs> <laughs> and your Paul bench. Ossenmacher. So um, if... Uh, well, this name, though. This name is a, a, a name from our beer baseball blogcast past. The only pitcher to give up a Fred Lynn's a grand slam, and the only grand slam in all star game history. Yep. Atlee Hammaker. So that's on your bench. The 50th anniversary of the all star game in 83. Yes, sir. That's right. All right. So Mark Guthrie, uh, he has nine career wins. Nine. That's nine, nine. more than I thought. Nine career wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roger McDowell, does he have more or less than nine? And, and this is 1991. 91. Oh, I see Matthew in the chat saying lower, and he's got my he's got my gimmick down, just naming them all out. But Matthew, I gotta go with my gut on this one. I gotta go higher. I gotta go higher. It's you without this baseball knowledge. Higher, and you are correct, sir. 42. Yes. Hey -oh. Hey -oh. So higher or lower with Greg Cattery? That guy looks like an angry uncle at Thanksgiving that's about to drop some political hot takes when I'm just trying to get some stuffing. But <laughs> you don't stick around that long in baseball. He's higher. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, I love it. Right. So 42 is the, the number to beat. So you say higher. Higher. 21. Oh, bah, 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 bah. oh gosh. That, that was tough. That was tough. That was so well. Oh, man. You put a red herring in there on me, brother. It's fine. It's fine. You're it's, like, hey, I so know. Big. You, you put so a big. senior citizen on the board. Of course, I'm going to think he's got a higher win, <laughs> win record. It's fine. So, Brett Saberhagen is my first card. Greg Harris. That is the second card. And, ooh, Jack Morris, the Hall of Famer. Our uh, Hall of Famer, our first Hall of Famer on the board tonight. All right. All right. So, hey, Jack. Yes, sir. 
Can you change your name to Jack Ossenmacher? <laughs> I can, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll switch all my dating websites over to Jack Ossenmacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So Brett Saberhagen, he has, at this point in his career, 97. Oof. 97 wins here. So oh, yeah. uh, probably halfway into his career here. Well, he was an interesting guy because his gim his his thing was in odd number of years he'd do incredible, and for some reason, even years he didn't do as well. That That's was like right. a thing for him for some reason for like six seven years. I no, forgot it. it weird. Could that be just like baseball is superstitious? There's a lot of superstition. It could be. Hey, Michael, can you show us the card and let's see? Can you compare? Do you need to take a few seconds? Oh, that's, yeah, let's, to, let's to test see. that theory. Let's see here. So uh, in 84, he had 10 wins. In okay. 85, he had 20 wins. Um, in 86, he had seven wins. In 87, he had 18 wins. Huh. See, there's something to uh, it. See, how about this? But uh, in 88, he had 14 wins. In 89, 23, led the league with 23. See, that's, in the- so, I, so that was really a thing that we were talking about. Like, why does he do so much better in in odd number of years? Is really a weird thing back then. But okay, so he had twenty three wins in nineteen eighty nine, and then yes. five wins in uh, ninety. Now, uh, was he pitching less games? How many games did he say he pitched in nineteen ninety? That's a good question. No, all the same. That's crazy. So he pitched. He pitched thirty eight, thirty two, thirty, thirty three, thirty five, thirty six. But then the get, wow. when he had five, when he had five wins, he only pitched twenty games, so he might have been hurt that year. Yeah, that's what I was curious. Come when he had to pitch less games, but yeah. still, even like winning five out of twenty starts, it's like, oh, yeah, you know. that is that is very interesting. Okay, so but the Wolves were not very good teams in the late eighties, too. Right, right. But there you go. There's your, there's like a fun superstitious thing. Well, they, that, they, you know, they 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 won a championship in eighty five, so he was a, he was like yeah. a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so 97 is the uh, number. Um, Greg Harris will definitely have less because I do not remember him. I think he's pitching in in Baltimore here. It might be a Memorial Stadium. Okay, I wasn't sure. Memorial Stadium, no less, yeah. So, and, and, you, and, and you knew that from the, from the blur. I said lower, but it's 48. It's, it's look, look all those years. I'm like, I, I, I saw all those years. I'm like, uh oh, Michael. Yeah, I have. Uh, I did not expect that, but yeah, he he played he played for the Alaska Gold Panners in '76 yeah. too. Awesome, good for him. He must have been All like right, reliever so, or something. Wow. All right. So 48 is the number to beat Jack Morris. Wow. Oh, good he's luck with this pitching, one. He's been pitching for 10 years here at this point, I think. Yeah. He, yeah. Okay. No he pitched for '84 for the Tigers. He pitched in. Uh, you know, he's pitching. Um, well, the next year he was on the twin. Was he on the Twins '91 World Championship? He was. This was probably the last, his last year yeah, with the right. Tigers. His last time with the Tiger, yeah. Yeah. So I'll definitely say I'll say more than 48 for sure. It's like five times as much. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 198 at this point. That is yeah. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He started oh, in '77, yeah. which I didn't expect either. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was. Quite- look at that. He was only a Tiger. His whole career up until Only that, tiger, until he left to go right. twin. Wow. And then he'll probably be no more for being a a, a twin. Well, no, I don't know. I wonder. No, I can't say that. I couldn't say that. No, he had some big wins for the. Yes, he definitely did. But he did for the Tigers too, though. So Ken Hill. Oh, I, I don't know. I will say he has less than one hundred and ninety-eight. Also, I, I, if he has twenty, I'll be super surprised. He has twelve. Hey. Has 12. There you go. Yeah, I just remember him being a middle reliever for sure. So Danny Jackson, I think he's um, you know starting pitcher, so he's going to have more uh, decisions. Uh, definitely more than uh, twelve for sure. Um, yep, higher here. Seventy-two. Oof. Seventy-two. Look go. at that. Good, he, good solid number. He actually led for the Reds. He actually had twenty-three wins, led the league in in uh, wow. wins in 20, 23 and eight. Wow. For the eighty-eight Reds. Now, how, how many how many games a year does a team play? A, 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 a team in a regular season, one sixty-two. Yes, so twenty-three wins, and you'll lead the league in wins. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Absolutely. Right. That's a good – like, nowadays it's rare when anybody reaches 23. All right. Um, I'm just – Like, if we talked about a guy on the show before, a uh, guy named Dane McLean, he's the last guy who got 30 wins this season. That was 1968. Huh. So okay. No one's even gotten close to 30, really. Yeah. Right. 30, that 30 hasn't been done in over – in, like, half a century. So. Yeah, and he had he had 30, 35 starts that year, which is, you know, pretty great, great as well. That's very good. Um, yeah. and, and 15 complete games he led the league as well. Wow. So that's, 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 that's pretty incredible. Nowadays, good luck getting 10 out of a starter. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. They'll get <laughs> yeah, you out of there. These damn pitching, kids right? today can't, can't destroy their bodies. So 72 is the, the number to beat. Uh, Scott Bankhead, I, yes. <laughs> I can say. I hope this doesn't snipe me, but I don't think that he has more than 72. Uh, so I'll say uh, lower. I'm right with 38. I don't think so. 38. Um, Next up is Scott Radinsky. Uh, That little cup right there, Jack, will tell you that he's a rookie. So he's not going to have a lot of of, uh, wins. Uh, I will definitely say lower than 38. So probably like 34. (laughs) Wow. He only has six. Ah. Then look at all look at all those minor league. Well, he was a reliever. From, yeah, I believe he was a reliever. So yeah. Michael, I hashtag do the research. Um, he was in a punk band called Pulley, P U L L E Y. That was on Epitaph, which is like one of the better, one of the bigger punk rock labels. So when band. you said this, singer look, of the band too. Look at look at it says Scott has his own rock. Oh, group there you go. Scared straight. I saw that listed. There is a band called Ten Foot Pole, which rings a bell for that period. And then he had been pulley in 1996. And that is awesome. Since that current, you know I don't know if still around, but he's from so Glendale, California. He was born in Glendale, California, living in Sim- Simi Valley. There you go. Well, that makes sense because Epitaph is was definitely a, a, a LA punk label started by one of the guys in a bad religion, if I remember right. So Paul Ossenmacher, I made it to, I made it all the way to Paul Ossenmacher. All the way to the Ossenmacher. And uh, six, six is the number to beat. I will definitely say higher, and I have not gone to my bench. I get, yeah, whatever. Twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. Jeez. Mike Michael Mondragon is like Cassius Clay. He doesn't do split decisions. He only does knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the disco machine, Michael Mondragon. Yeah. Two straight weeks, I went to the bench and it cost me. I got to stop going to my bench. I told you, man. <laughs> stop taking the coward's way out. Just do it. Took the cowards away. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> I'm the guy who gets like two cards in. That you know. Have you ever, ever, ever seen me go to my bench? <laughs> no, because I'm not. Well, a well, look at your record, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, one fifty-four, respectable number. Well, not now. Right? Now it's even lower. You might be one fifty now. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where you draw the line. One fifty-four. Oh, that's fine. One fifty is like. I was exactly. proud of 154, 150. I need to have like a one-on-one pep talk with myself. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Wait, can I hear that again, please? <laughs> thank you. Because that actually is me providing the sound bite. We have a soundboard. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <All right. laughs> is that the special one of that, Michael? It is. It is. It is. Oh, it's you. a little, it's a little show, edited, right? but it's it's worth it. So uh, thank you. So uh, we could definitely have. <laughs> yes, thank you. There's a lot more coming that, that way. So whenever we have these kind of epiphanies, we'll definitely I'm have just some. Glad sound that wedding. there wasn't a gas a gaseous emission after that. After that, <laughs> that's a joke for just Michael and I. Sorry, yes, and Mike yes. know what I'm talking about. And Matt was here. You know what I'm talking about. Sorry, yes. guys. All right, trivia. so let's close it out with some baseball trivia. Let's test your knowledge of baseball. This is when, this is when I win my money back. I'm That's like right. an encyclopedia of baseball. <laughs> How's those doll hairs coming? <laughs> this, hey, I'm picking them out one by one. You'll get them. I thought for me. I thought it was for Michael. <laughs> All right, let's do it. 
Who is the active leader for batting average in Major League Baseball as of right now? Right now. Is it Mike Trout? Is it oh. Miguel Cabrera? Jose Altuve or Trey Turner? Man, this well, is too easy. Number three, Jose Altuve, locked in, taking it home. Wow. Wow. See, when you read the question, the first thing that came to my head is was Miguel Cabrera. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with him. Yeah, but so bubble me. plug. Oh, I got bubble plug. All right. Nope. You got bubble plug on your Come side. On, bubble plug, you're on my team. My team. She's looking you're to Matthew win. With Altuve. Oh, you got right? you got Matthew on your side though. Trey Turner's an interesting one there. I was like, all right. I mean, being Mike Trout, I was like, oh, it's hard to go against Mike Trout there. But Ian going with. Altuve as well. Altuve getting getting a lot of love here. Yeah, and I mean, we're, the only thing Cabrera though, he's been playing a really long time, but he had some incredible like three forty, three fifty seasons. You know. Yep. We're 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 an Altuve positive broadcast. <laughs> Very Altuve positive. <laughs> I'll forgive you this time, kid. <laughs> Anybody else? We're gonna do a 10 second countdown here. And thanks we're, we're for having me for tuning in here. It's here two or three. There's no love for Mike Trout or Trey Turner. Yeah. Three, two. Yeah. So Matthew says that yeah, before I saw the answer. Yeah, it, like, for me hey. it was Cabrera. Yeah. For me it was Cabrera. So we'll see. Three, two, one. It is Miguel Cabrera, a 310 batting average. Altuve wow, is, is in second place with 307. Mike Trout, 304. Trey Turner, 302. Wow. This one really surprised me. At number five, Robinson Cano. Wow. What? You remember him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna say Buster anything. Posey, who cool. just retired, um, is would no longer be on this list, but he was at 301. Joey oh, wow. Votto, 301. DJ LeMahieu, um, and Charlie Blockman at, at 300. I'm surprised it's this low of a number, but I think it would go over there too. Like I said, he he's been playing for 15 years at least, right? Yeah, remember he's on he like was, the 04. He's on the 04 Marlins. We talked about that on the show, right? Oh, right uh, 03. 03. 03. He was in the 03 Mar yeah, Marlins. We talked about that on here. Yeah. As a youngster. Dude, yep. this Look is a great, great picture, man. Yeah. Oh, my so, Lord. How did you find that? What, why Why is this picture significant? Well, it's snowing. Well, it's snowing, but it's, it's actually kind of historic in a sense. Is it, the, is it the first game at the new Detroit Stadium? No, this was the first home run of the 2021 season. Oh, wow. I forgot there was like a snow game. That's it right. A, it was a snow game. That's right. And then like uh, Akil Badu had like this crazy, um, crazy run right after that. Well, hey, does anybody remember uh, Yermin Mercedes? Talking about the first weekend. Of I love, okay, so I playing fantasy baseball, like he hit like, 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 like seven home runs in the first week. And I just picked him up. I'm like, no one's gonna pick him up. And then he he did better. And then all of a sudden, he, by by summer, he was out of baseball. Tony Larusa yeah. ran him out of yeah. baseball, just yeah. because he um he hit. Okay, so Jack, so yes, sir. so in baseball, there's uh there's unwritten rules. There in in every sport, there's unwritten rules. So one of the unwritten rules is is if you're up by a certain amount of of runs. That you don't pile on, and I, and I still don't understand this because yeah, it, you, I I can see by it doesn't make sense because it's, you you come to see offense and then what are you, what are you supposed to like strike out? Are you supposed yeah. to like? <laughs> Guys, there's, to there's way too much offense going on Michael, in this game. Cut it short, Michael. Dude, yeah, you know what I say about that, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> or wham. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, okay, so so you could be up like 10 to nothing in in in, in like the 5th and you're you still can play. You're not supposed to steal bases. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to like bunt. 
it's it's weird. They, they, I don't know why the game changes. Anyway, so Yerman Mercedes, like in a, in a blowout game, on a three zero pitch, <laughs> just crushes one. Okay, <laughs> in the baseball unwritten rules, you're not supposed to be swinging on three zero. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There's no rule that says you're supposed to, but it a Hall of Fame manager <laughs> like buried his own player for doing this. Oh, your 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 guy Tony Larusa buried my him. guy. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So I don't wait, know. Tony Larusa knew he was there. Tony Larusa knew well, he was at the game. I well, thought Tony well, Larusa didn't know where he was this year. So Larusa ru- Larusa runs him off the team. Larusa was the manager of the of the White Sox. Okay. Uh, the team that Yerman Mercedes played for. Right. So he, he basically wrote, he, said, he goes, yeah, I wouldn't do that. It's uh, it's unclassy. It's all this and all that. And it's like kind of sticking up for baseball's like weirdness. And it's like right after that, Yerman like was like hitting like almost like 400 or something like that. He, he like spiked down. He didn't get the playing time. Actually quit the team and uh, like was like missing an action for a while and like never came back to the team like in the second half. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Melted yeah. Down. Like, hey man, you're doing too good. Slow it down. I mean, this is only professional baseball. Pump the well, brakes, kid. There, there was also was it yeah. It, was it Fernando Tatis Jr. who had a grand slam on a three? Yeah, that pitch happened a year a, before, and he was uh, criticized for that. And it was oh, like, yeah. this guy. Because uh, the projects were up like eight runs, and he saw a chance to hit a grand slam home run. It's like, yeah. All right, he had a grand slam on a three zero pitch, and 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 the, the 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 argument is like, don't give up grand slams, and don't get down in the count. Right. Stop. Yeah, it's 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 a shitty yeah. rule. Excuse me. Excuse my language. It, <laughs> it's it's. I I don't like it. It's only not a because, rule, sir. It's not a rule. It's not you a know, rule. You know, if you're worried about three zero pitch, why don't you just do the whole? Sit. Apparently, you just go. Oh, walk. There's no walk. You can do it in the middle of an at bat. Right. It's if you're it's, that worried. It's, just say send the first. It's Remember dumb that? because wow. other people try to enforce it and they hit people. Um, wow. That's they, like they, thank you. That's like having to shake everybody's hand when you walk in the room. Like it's gross. it's a, it's a lot like that. It's a hundred percent like that. So you um, yeah. So it's it's kind of a dumb thing, but this happened to him. So um, anyway, we we've gone we've gone on a tangent, but uh, I want to right. we always do, which is but what yeah. we do. Everyone's yeah. hanging with us, and hey, people are chiming in and giving their opinion too. So hey, it's all good. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Th- th- thank you, Matt. Yeah. Potty mouth. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't often do it, but I, I get passionate. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. So what, what's your next question, Michael? Question Mondragon. number two. Who is the active leader in RBIs for major league baseball as of right now? I got this one. You got this one. Oh yeah. I know. I can tell you who it is right now. without even looking. Okay. Right. Wait, let him Albert take his Pujols. I'll tell you right now, Albert Pujols. Okay, flip, right. flip it. Nelson Cruz, Miguel Cabrera, again, Albert Pujols or Joey Votto? I was thinking Miguel Cabrera for an instant, and I'm like, no, it's Pujols. It's got to be. See, I think you're way off here, dude. I think. <laughs> Mike, hey. Hey, Cowboy Jack, I will bet you money on this one. I also <laughs> bet you – Money that I'm right. Actual, actual American dollars. Yes. Not doll hairs, doll lures. I am correct. Side chat me because I'm going number four. Dirty Joey Votto, baby. I love Joey Ooh. Votto, but there's no way he has more RBIs than Albert Pools. By the way, Joey Votto is one of my favorite players He's of rad. all time. I love Heck Yeah, Much love. Cheers to Joey Votto. Definitely, yeah, man. Definitely He's awesome. He is so much fun. And uh, I wish you played in a bigger market team. You know, we get a little bit more like visibility, but yeah, he's awesome. I think he's awesome. Yeah. He like won the MVP one year and then he tried to walk into like Wrigley field and they stopped him and they wouldn't let him in. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so you, you're saying Joey Votto, Kevin, with Joey Votto. Pools. a lot of people going with pools here. <laughs> Matt has wrestling on the brain. 
<laughs> yeah, he was. Which is weird. He he typically doesn't. He typically doesn't wrestling. talk about wrestling that much. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Usually it's all baseball references, but tonight yeah, yeah. I've seen wrestling. It's weird. He's a big cricket fan, too. And mind you, Matt, he, he just got you. missed a whole Matt missed a whole bunch of wrestling references earlier in the show. So you may have to go back and watch. You, you definitely have to watch You'd the appreciate replay. the wrestling stuff earlier. Take care, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right. So, uh, anybody else? One. Just, two, just show its pools three. already and get this done. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Ah, yeah, I know. I'm the pool. You know what? That, that, the fact you use a Dodger photo, like that, that makes that's tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, he's like one of your favorite players of all time. Played on the Cardinals, your team, and yet you're like, no, I gotta use a photo of. Current photo of him as a doyer. Right. This is a current photo. Beautiful. He's not a he's not a cardinal Beautiful. yet. I, I I doubt that they'll put <laughs> him on the cardinals, but um we'll see. But um 2150, the second place, Miguel Cabrera yeah. <laughs> in plain sight, but no one's watching. 1804. Robinson Cano again. Robinson Cano again, 1302. Uh, Nelson wow. Cruz, uh, 1238. Uh, the Desperate Housewife, Evan Longoria, 1089. <laughs> Joey Votto, 1065. Ryan oh, I was Zimmerman. close. I was close. Yeah. Ryan Zimmerman, uh, 1061. Yes, Justin yeah. Upton uh, with 1,000. Exactly 1,000. Huh. Yeah. Winning. Nicely done, Bubble Pug. Yeah, you and I both, Bubble Pug. Good job. <laughs> yes, Pujols, indeed. I know someone used to call him Pool Gus, and I'm like, that's not very nice. <laughs> Man, you know what? Next week, I, I, yeah, next week I'm really going to yeah, be late, unfortunately. Just stop it. You're going to be late every Oh, week. I really am, it, unfortunately. It's okay. It will, 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 ah. We have I was, a great, like, I was we have like a great time when in my here. Wow. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> See, it's like, why do you need me here? All you got to do is press the, <laughs> press the lab button. I only need to be here. I just get drunk somewhere else and watch the show. We automated you, dude. We we, yep. we need your expertise every single time. Kevin. Yes, we do. Thank you. I know. I'm kidding. Thank you, sir. Uh, if you would like to become a supporter of the Beer Baseball blog, check out our Patreon page. You can check us out on Etsy as well. This is where you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We super appreciate it. This has been a super geek out session. We love flexing our nerdy knowledge of baseball, craft beer, pro wrestling, pop culture. Where else can I talk about Jimmy Durante and people? <laughs> cha -cha -cha. <laughs> I forgot about that. I just was, my brain froze. I'm like, Jimmy Durante, what? <laughs> Like what happened? I, and it, it's my go-to, so it's like I knew. And and um, it's funny because if you watch um, if you watch AEW, All Elite Wrestling, uh, Excalibur, and myself, we used to make the Jimmy Durante uh, reference. Actually, no, it was a George Burns because we'd we'd say um, good uh, say good night, Gracie, and then good, I'd go good night, Gracie, good night, Gracie, <laughs> and that's an old George Burns yep. joke. Um, and it is about, mm, I think at this point, 80 years old, <laughs> yes. it, it was definitely from like the forties or maybe the fifties and nobody knew what we were talking about. So, yeah. um, again, thank you for the opportunity to flex all this dumb knowledge. Well, my favorite one you said to me when I used to do commentating with you and, uh, at Pro Wrestling Gorilla was I was waiting for Excalibur and you called me the, you said, Kevin Taro is the Foster Brooks of Pro Wrestling Gorilla. <laughs> and like I'm like you, me, and all you already even know who Foster Brooks is. Uh, Jack, do you like, know who Foster Brooks is? He's a baseball player. He no, he's not. not. <laughs> he was a drunk comedian. So there you go. He ah, was just a same, comedian same, who, same who, who they said he they said he faked it, but he was really good at it. But he was just he like, was really he was good like, at making it. <laughs> yeah, he, he just his act was that he was just drunk, so he would just talk like. Huh. I'm going to watch some Foster Brooks when we're done here yeah. on YouTube. And, sure. um, yeah, so. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, it's just awesome to, to make dumb references and, and of course. watch us do it. So, Oh, it's dumb. Oh, yeah. Of course. There you go. Yeah, you know, Matt, all yeah. The words of, the of course you that, do. That's Matt's. That's one of Matt's gimmicks. And there is words. I like. There's words. I don't know. <laughs> Good job. So, Matt. Jack, Kevin, I'm not going to say any last words. I'm going to say Thank like, you. what would you like to say to end this show? <laughs> Who's going first, I, Jack? I just want to say thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you to everybody that likes, subscribes, watches every week. You mean the world to us. Thank you so, so, so much. We love you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tremendous. Yeah, so same goes for me, but there is something I'm going to plug. This coming Sunday, I've been seeing this. If you like beer, Sunday, I'm seeing it. Small Brewery Sunday. Yes. So let's talk about that. For those of you who like to support your small brewery, Small Brewery Sunday is a great day to do it. Sure, we're all going to be doing some shopping this weekend. You know, I always, you know, try to support your local business if you can. But hey, Small Brewery Sunday. Wherever you live, there's probably one by you. Yeah, and Will will definitely share. I think I shared something today on Twitter uh, about that. I retweeted something. But we will definitely be doing it on our social media, you know, getting out there and supporting small breweries. Um, we look for the symbol that we told Cowboy Jacker about, about the independent. Well, definitely. What Do you, do you have one there? Yeah, do I, ha I have one or two? Yeah, look for that little upside down independent brewing craft brewing right there look for that on your beer yeah do you have it right there yeah right on very good so we'll definitely uh be promoting that we definitely want to support these small breweries because they're like us they're they're small they're doing fun stuff they're definitely getting some great uh beer out there and you should definitely it's again all these places are like, uh, like what would be a small place, like a, uh, like a little small restaurant or something like that, you know, like, yeah, of course. um, they're trying to, pops, you know, yep. Rick, 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 we want them around. Richter L works in Peoria, Arizona, right up the street from me. I drank their beer on the show. The guy that owns the place is the guy that's brewing the beer. He's the guy that's pouring the beer and canning it. Yep. If you're in Phoenix, show up for uh, Richter L Works. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll put, we'll definitely put some other places out there. We definitely want to support. Uh, I mean, just look cameras. up where you live. Just do a Yelp search. If you have Yelp, just Yelp. Current location, look up breweries. There's got to be something close by to you where you are. Yeah. You know, try just you know try something. You know, if you don't like beer, you might find a seltzer or something a little lighter for you to try. See if you like it. The main thing is yeah, we want to support these businesses. That's the fun part about the breweries. They just don't have beer now. They have the seltzers. They have uh, sometimes the um, ciders. The ciders. Oh yeah, we were gonna check out the uh, cider core the in um, yeah. in Arizona. We didn't get to get out there, but it was actually it's run by Marines in Arizona. So right. they, they have a great story. Usually, uh, they have great uh, things. Also, breweries have like root beer. They actually yeah. have like uh, we went to one. It was Coachella Brewing in uh palm springs right it's technically not palm springs it was like thousand oh gosh thousand it was thousand palms thousand palms right and they actually like had drive palm springs they had their yeah, own root beer. Beer. We're like, what? Huh. yeah and so like you can find a they they have different things so definitely uh check it out um untapped uh, uh u-n-t-a-p-p-d uh, check out that app. That's where we get a lot of our uh, things. You can actually look in the breweries in your area, and uh, it's a great way to kind of find stuff. I actually found a lot of breweries. I found a brewery one time that wa that wasn't even open. It was on Untapped, and I went in, and they were still setting up. That's how that's how close wow. I was. I'm like, I'm all you. You guys are on Untapped. You're all like, yeah, come on in, and they weren't even open yet, wow. which was it was really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep so again thank you so much we will be back next tuesday with another beer baseball blogcast episode 83 uh who who won the world series in 1983 kevin that'll be the baltimore orioles nicely dot t this is where i have the philadelphia philly right that's why you keep them in your back well, pocket. you know i saw your graphic online 
The Phil- I know the Cardinals won the World Series that year. I was still a little bitter because the Angels lost the- in the playoffs that year to the Brewers. That's right. That was, and- a, tough- that was a tough pill to swallow as a seven-year-old. That's right. I, I maybe and, was seven and Why did I? Why did I have Bruce Suter on there? Why did I have Bruce Suter on the eighty-two? Was he the Roll Aids Fireman of the Year in nineteen eighty-two? I believe he was, and he pitched the last out in the World Series in Game Seven. All right, see that I wouldn't remember, but I know you'll remember that because that was your team. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. We love you and take care. Cheers. Cheers. Happy oh. Thanksgiving. And Miss Calabash, right? Wherever you are. Wherever you are. (laughs) Say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie.